Joshua 11, 6 through 8 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them. For tomorrow about this time I will deliver them up all slain before Israel. Thou shalt haw their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the water of Miram suddenly. And they fell upon them and the, del and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel who smote them and chased them unto the great Zidon and unto Miz Mizroth Maim and unto the valley of Mizpah eastward, and they smote them until they left them none remaining. I want to preach to you today on the subject of take the city. Take the city. Amen. God, I ask you in this house today, you see the needs that are here, and you see the things that are in our lives, and I am asking you, God, that you'll minister this word to us, that you'll help us to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church today. Help us, I pray, God, for we in need of you today, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. I know that represented in this house today are many needs. And I know that represented in this house today and elsewhere outside of this sanctuary today, for those that are not able to make it today, are many needs, many battles that are being fought, many issues that are going on in our lives, many, many things that, that are, 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 uh, we're battling against. Right. And I'm here to tell you today that the victory is in the power in the hand of God. Right. That no matter what your issue is and no matter the, what it is that you're going through, God is the one that will give you the strength and the help and that will deliver and help in each and every one of our needs. Right. God is the one. God is the one. God is the one. And so I want to talk to you today on the subject, the, 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 the issue of taking the city. Israel had enjoyed a, a lot of prosperity under the leadership of Joseph. Because of Joseph in Egypt, Israel had been uh, relegated to a very high position. It would be like your boss at work that thinks the very, very best of you and gives you all of the best of, of the promotions and all of the best of anything that you need. It, it, it was very good for Israel. But there came a time, the Bible says, that a Pharaoh came into existence that did not know Joseph. Right. And my friend, when the boss changes out and you get a new boss and, and he don't know what you've done in the past, and you don't know how good you are, and he don't like you, life can be difficult. Life can be very difficult. And so life became very difficult for Israel. They had a lot of things that, that the Pharaoh required of them. It maybe started off just small, but pretty soon it became to, uh, he, he, he demanded of them slavery and he demanded of them uh, in, uh, that they kill their, their children. And so this was, this was something that was very hard for Israel to go through. And so by the miraculous hand of God, Israel was delivered from that slavery. The power that God exhibited in the deliverance of Israel was a testimony. All of the miracles that God did and everything that transpired in that was a testimony. It was a testimony to the people of Israel. God wanted to let His people know, I have the power to do anything that is necessary in your life. It was a testimony to let Israel know that you're about to go somewhere and you're about to go through things that I want you to see even here before you face them, that my power is greater than any obstacle that you'll ever face. But the testimony that God was doing was not just a testimony for Israel, but it was a testimony to every opposing force that Israel would ever face down the line. God was showing to every enemy, God was showing to every place that was outside of Egypt the power that he possessed among his people, that these people are, are marked by my power, and these people are surrounded by my supernatural authority, and that wherever they go and whatever they do, the power that I possess goes with them. And so the testimony of Israel's deliver, deliverance was so strong among the Israelites, but it was also so strong among the nations round about them. Mm -hmm. Israel's journey from here, that they, that they left Israel, the entire journey that they had is for one purpose and one purpose only, and that was to take the land. They were not meant to wander around in the desert. 
They were not meant to go for 40 years. If they would have just simply obeyed in the beginning, everything would have been fine. But the ultimate purpose of these people was that they would go and take the land. Their battles are an example for us today. There are lessons that we can learn from Israel as they would take each city. They are, they are lessons for us in our life that we will learn, and they are lessons for us as a church that we will learn in taking of our city and what it takes, what we must do, how we must fight in order to take the city. Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 12. This is an example. It is one of the very first battles that Israel had to fight. <clears throat> you find in Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 12, it says, Then Amalek, and then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Reph Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said unto him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron and Hur, went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and they put it under him and he sat thereon and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. In the taking of the city, in the taking of the land, the people must uphold the pastor. The people must uphold the pastor. We must uphold our pastor's hand in the taking of the city. You have to understand that if, if, the, if Satan can come against the head, if he can come against the leadership, if he can discourage the leader of the church, that's the first place that he will go. It's the first place that he will try to bring discouragement. And there are times that as pastor of the church, it doesn't matter in this church or in any church that you may find yourself in, that the pastor of the church is constantly constantly under attack. The pastor of the church is constantly being bombarded with discouragement, being bombarded with things that, that are outside of, of the church, with life issues and the issues of the people of the church. There is constantly this, this weighing and this heaviness. It's important, church, that you, as the body of Christ, that you uphold the hands of your pastor, that you spend time in prayer for him, that you spend time in prayer seeking God's help for the pastor. I'm telling you as pastor of this church, I need your help. I need your prayers. I need you to be on your face for me that God would lead and guide and direct because there are opposing forces that come against this church that are very strong and very mighty. And if he can get me to fall, if he can get me to be discouraged, if he can get me to become uh, lost in the, the pursuit of what God has called us to do and become very tied up with things external to this, do you understand what will happen to the church? Do you understand what will happen? The city cannot be taken if the leadership itself is not involved in the taking of the city, if the leadership does not have the passion and the burden for the taking of the city, the city will never be taken. If Moses, if all Moses did was say, well, we just want to, uh, we just want to get to the land so we won't fight with anybody, we won't, we won't work again, we, we, we'll make concessions along the way, they, they will never take the land. They'll, they'll never do what they're supposed to do. The, the leadership, Moses, had to follow the direction of God. He could not be discouraged by the things that he saw. He had to continue on. We must uphold our pastor's hands. It's important to the church. It's important to the church that you uphold the pastor's wife as well. Because the pastor's wife is in need of encouragement, is in need of help herself. There are things that she is going to go through. There are things that she is going to have to struggle with. There are things that are going to try to distract her. And, and if the devil can get into the marriage of the pastor and the pastor's wife, if, if he can become a, a separate there, or if there can be animosity or issues that are, 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 are arise in the marriage of the pastor and his wife, then there can be a, 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 a separation of them or a, a separation of their, of their unity and that will trickle down to the church. 
that will fall into the hands of the church. It's important to pray for the pastor's wife. It's important to pray for her because she has been given the counsel for the ladies of the church. And it's a very important that we uphold our pastor and our pastor's wife. It's very important. I don't say that to you just simply because I am your pastor and I'm asking you to do things for me. I'm saying there's going to come a day when I will no longer be your pastor. I I will reach an age. I've got to pass on should Jesus tarry to uh, to my my inheritance above and and, and somebody else will pastor this church. And we have got to to create a a culture, a habit of praying for the leadership of the church. We've got to do that. We have to have that, that, that we are in support of and we are in prayer for the, the leadership of the church. Numbers chapter 13, verses 17 through 18. It says, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land what it is and the people that dwelleth therein whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and, whether, and what cities they be that, that they dwell in, whether they're in tents or strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be of good courage and bring the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. They... Moses, this is the accounting of Moses talking to the spies and telling them to go into the land. Moses said, I want you to walk through that land. And I want you to see what the land looks like. How, where are the rivers? Are, are there mighty rivers that we're going to have to ford and cross as we go through there? Are, are there, what is the lay of the land? Are there good valleys and good areas that we can cross through quickly? Or is it very mountainous and we're going to have to uh, go around this area or that area? Where, what does the land look like? How, how is the land? Is there a lot of wood in there? Are we going to be able to build some of the ma- machinery that we need? Will we be able to do the work? Or is it very desert? Or very dry and parched. What are we looking at? What, 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 is the, what, are, what are the cities that, that this place looks like? Are, are they all in tents? Do they, are, are they un, unfortified and, and not very, uh, very well kept? Do, are the people very, uh, very mobile and they move around a lot? Or have they built great cities? What are, what are we looking at? What will we be going into? How about the fruit of the land? Is there good food in the land? Is there good ways that we can go? And we know if we go this way, there's a lot of food. But if we go this way, it's going to be very parched and there's not a lot that we can gain. What are, what are we looking at? And so Moses told Israel, he said, when you go into the land, look at these things. And the purpose of looking at those things was so that they would have a good idea of what it was that they were going to be in when they started to take the cities. When they began to overthrow the cities, we need to know some of these issues, some of these things. I want you to go in and I want you to walk through them. So that's what they were supposed to do. What is a good route? Make a map. Show us a good route to go through this place. But the report that came back was not what they were sent in to give. Mm -hmm. Numbers chapter 13, verse 26. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. The the lesson that we have to learn here, the thing that we have to learn about this in the taking of the city is that we cannot fear the enemy. We, 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 We cannot fear the enemy. It does not matter what enemy that we come against. It does not matter what enemy it is that we we may find ourselves faced with. We cannot 
put our, our eyes on the stature of mankind. We cannot look through our city and say that there are people in this city, there are rich doctors and rich lawyers and rich people. What are they going to want with this gospel? There are people in this city that have this and that and these and those, and, and they're not going to want this gospel. We do not make a judgment based on what we see. We're not here to sample soil, my friend. We're not here to sample soil. We're here to spread seed. That's what we're here to do. We're here to bring out the Word of God to each and every person and let God deal with them as God desires to. But there are opposition against us, and hell does not want us to go forward with this gospel. Hell does not want us to make any inroads into this city. And trust me, church, he'll do everything he can to disrupt every way that we will work. He'll do everything that he can. But we cannot look at the enemy and say, this is too big of a thing for me to do. If Israel were to look, and as they did on the first time that they went in, and they looked at the giants, and they looked at the big walled cities, and they looked at all of that, but they forgot something. They forgot something very important. Because God had given them a testament back in Egypt. And that testament was, I'm going to perform miracles for you that are so great that when you get into the land, you will not doubt me. You will not fear the people. If I can destroy the entire army of Egypt, the greatest army on the face of the earth in front of your eyes, why would you fear the Amalekites? Why would you fear the Hittites? Why would you fear the Amorites? If God said, I can do that. Why would you care about anything else? Why would you worry about anything else? Come on, church. There is not an enemy in this city that we should be afraid of. If God can move pie wackets in just a few short months that we came into this city and caused them to move out, then what force can stand against the church of the living God? What church can stand against the people of God? What, what, what force is out there that can stand against us? There isn't. I'm telling you, church, it does not matter what you're faced with, and it does not matter what is going on in your life. It doesn't matter what issue that you're faced with. If you will turn to God, if you will trust Him, if you'll put your faith into Him, then God will do whatever it is that you need. Come on, church. We've got to raise our faith. I'm tired, I'm tired of, of, of dealing with issues that we don't need to deal with. I'm tired of the church and the people in the church dealing with things that they don't need to deal with. The burdens and the issues that, are, that we're battling against are not issues that we should have any, any trouble with whatsoever. But they keep binding and keep tying up our times. We cannot deal with that. We have a great work to do. And it's time, church, that we take these issues and we take these battles and we take these things and we place them into the hand of God. And you and I both have got to raise our faith and say, God, you can do this. God, you can do this. God, you can make a way. If there is an enemy in front of me that is trying to destroy me, if there is an enemy that is in front of me that is trying to take away what God has promised me that I can have, that I will not allow that enemy to stand. And you've got to understand, this, this is the promise that God gave Israel. Is it not? God brought them to the Jordan River, took them right straight to the Jordan River, let them, let, let them sp- send spies in to look at the land, to, to, to bring back fruit. They ate of the fruit of the land. It's all because God says, you're about to go in. God didn't say, I'm going to bring you to the, to the very edge right here, Right there is the the Jordan River, and right over there is the promise. Now, you're going to get to eat the fruit, but that's it, buddy. Back out in the desert you go. I was just teasing. I just just wanted wanted to make you you real happy for a moment, and then I'm going to just discourage you for the rest of your life. I'm just going to keep bringing you right up there, and then I'm just going to jerk the rug out from under you. Keep bringing you right up there, and I'm going to take it away again. We get that image of God. We get that mindset that, God, you're just going to take me right there, right to the point where it's going to be good, and you're going to jerk the rug out from underneath me. You're going to disappoint me again. God is not in the process and in the habit of disappointing his people. If we do not take it, it's because we did not obey. And that's exactly what happened to Israel. That's exactly what happened to them. They looked at it and they said, these people are too big. These walls are too big. My friend... Stop looking at your trouble. Stop looking at your problem. Stop looking at what has been been tying you up and messing with your life and start looking to God. 
Start looking to the power. Do you realize the power that God just constantly displays in this church? Do you realize the power? What was it like last Sunday when the power of God swept over this house? What was it like on Thursday when God moved into this house? It is constant. It is continual. But that's a purpose. That's a reason. It's a testament for you, church, that you will know. That you'll know. I can go out there. And I can face battles out there. Oh, it's good in here. If we could all live right here, this would be awesome. This would just be awesome. But I like my bed back home. I'm sorry. I like my house. I have a job. I got a life. I got a world that I got to go into. And so do you. But you've got to be able to take what is here, there. You've got to be able. And we face the giant out there, not in here. And you've got to look to God. And you've got to say, God, that's my battleground. That's where I'm going. I am going to be a man. I am going to be a woman. I am going to stand. And I will not fall. I will not falter. We cannot, we cannot let those things tie us up. We cannot let those things get involved in our lives and cause us to stumble and fall constantly. It cannot happen. We have to look above the giant in our life and look to God and say, God, this is your giant, and you will slay it. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just take a moment and worship the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua chapter 2, 8 through 11. This is the next portion of taking the city. Joshua 2, 8 through 11. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the man, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Why? For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what ye did to the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Shion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Our city, our city must hear of the power and of the majesty of our God. They've got to hear the testimony of the power of God among his people. Our city must have their ears tingle with what God has been doing. Do you understand that when God set Israel free, what happened to the world round about them was so significant that this is some 40, 80 years later that they are now standing on the other side of the Jordan River looking at the city of Jericho. And and in that city... 80 years earlier, they heard what God did. And the power of that word was so strong that it changed the people themselves. That their hearts were changed. Their minds were changed. And their spirits were changed. Why? Because they heard of the power of God. Church, when our city hears of the power of God, when our city hears that God has been doing miracles in that Soldatna Pentecostal church, that people have been seeing that were blind, that people that were lame are walking, that deaf ears have been opened, that lives have been changed, all of a sudden people are going to begin to hear of the fame and the power of our God. They have got to hear that our God is real, that our God is alive. I'm not talking about our doctrine. They're going to hear our doctrine. They're going to hear the word of God preached to them. But what I am talking about is the power of our God among his people. They've got to know it. 
They've got to realize that God is not just a concept in the mind that you believe on at a time when you have a hunger for him. It's more than just a time when I say I believe that there is a God, yet there is never a time in my life afterwards or any place other that I experience his power, that his spirit fills me, that his miraculous hand is upon my life, and I see him moving, and I feel his power among his people. My, my friend, it's a real God that we serve with real power that is real among his people. And you can touch him and you can feel him and his power is evident among his people. It was in Israel. He was a cloud of pillar in the daytime and fire at night. He was manna in the morning. He was a rock of water to them. He was everything. He was their sustenance. He was their power. He was their guidance. He was the counsel. He was the hedge round about them. He was everything to the people of Israel and this city must know that God can be everything to you he can be the God that leads and guides you in the darkest moments of your life he's the God that will supply your needs when nothing else will he'll be your bread in the morning he'll be your water of a rock God can do and God will do anything that you desire and anything that you need of him and this city must know that this city must know that the city's got to know that that God that we serve is able to help them. Amen. And so we go into our workplaces and we go into the city and we go around these people constantly. It's time, church, that we begin to let them know. Let me tell you something about a God that I serve. Let me tell you what God did in our church. Let me tell you about a young lady that had an issue inside of her stomach that doctors had done everything, in, even to the point of giving her a complete hysterectomy and nothing was taking away the pain that was inside of her. But we anointed her with oil and prayed over her and God healed her immediately and took all the pain away. Let me tell you about the time that a young man went on a hike and hurt himself so bad that he couldn't walk. He had to be carried down. They had to carry him up the stairs. They put him in a, in a chair and just began to pray over him. Hadn't got 30 seconds into the prayer, and that young man jumped up and began to run around that place as God healed him. Let me tell you. Let me tell you about a couple that couldn't have a baby and God blessed them and God healed and God delivered and God allowed a child to be born. Let me tell you about the things that God has been doing. Let me tell you about marriages that have been put together. Let me tell you about families that have been put back together. Let me tell you about what God has been doing because people out there are looking and they're hoping and they're desiring because there are all kinds of medication that they're on for anxiety and fear and depression and all of these things that they're having to deal with. But I got a God. But I got a God. I got a God. Hear about my God. Come experience my God. Come taste and see. I'm not lying to you. You just walk in the door. You just sit down in the pew. I won't say a word to you. I won't talk to you once. I'll just let God do the work because it's not me, my friend. This ain't about me. This is about my God and what my God can do. He can do it. And our city must hear the fame of our God. I tell you, there is one thing that has just eaten me. It has been the desire of my, of my entire time here in Soldatna. And it is something that I have prayed and I have asked God for. I said, God, the one thing that I want in this city is I want, I want the city to know the, the majesty of your name. I want the city that your name would be renowned in this city. That people would know that there is a God in Soldatna. That he's alive. That he's real. I, I want the name of Jesus to be so renowned in this city. Not a, not a cuss word on a bar stool. Not, not, not something that's used in a, in a, in a passing phrase of, of, of anger. I, I, I want the name of Jesus to be so renowned and so honored in this city. Because it is the name above every name. It's a name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And I want that for our city. And, and I want people to know that, that our God that we serve is real. He's alive. He can do anything that you need in your life. Amen. Joshua chapter 6, 1 through 2. The next thing that we've got to realize. It says... Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. 
And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. God said to Joshua, Here's the city of Jericho. I have given it into your hand. The thing that we have to understand before we ever go anywhere in the city is we have to understand that the battle belongs to the Lord. That, that this is his fight. This, the, the souls, the people, the, the victory over this city against the forces of hell, against the op- opposition of, of the reaching of the people of the city, that, that battle belongs to God. That is not my battle. That is not your battle. That is not something that we can do. It's something that God will do. And because God will do it, God will get the glory. Not me, not you, not anybody in this church. God will get the glory for everything that is accomplished and everything that is done. God is the one that will get the glory. Jericho was a very great city and it was greatly fortified. It rested five miles from the, Red, uh, the Dead Sea. They, the Israelites were greatly outnumbered when they looked at this city. The city was too great for them to take. They did not have the resources and they did not have the power to capture Jericho. They could not overcome it at all. But, the God, but God said, even though it was too great for them, God said, I have given you this city. I gave it to you. You didn't take it. You won't take it. I will give it to you. This was going to be the work of God. I wish that I could have seen on that day exactly what happened. I wish I could have been there and saw in the spiritual world what happened. I don't know if angels were there and had drawn their sword and stood against the walls of that city and at the shouting of the people began to smite the walls of Jericho. I don't know if the angels were up on the top of the wall and jumping up and down and causing all of the walls to go flat. I don't know if the hand of God himself just swept across that place and knocked the walls down. I don't know how it happened. Happen. I do know this, that when, when the Israelites walked around that place and they shouted as God had, ins- had instructed them, those walls came down. It wasn't because of catapults. It wasn't battering rams. They didn't put a bomb next to it. They didn't burn those gates down. It was the hand of God. And the Israelites walked in and took the city over the rubble of those walls. It was the power and the hand of God. And so no matter what you and I are faced with, and no matter what the walls that are against us, no matter what we come against, it does not matter. We have to understand that God gave the promise of the city, not me, not Mitchell, not anybody in this church. God gave us the promise of this city. And then if God gave us the promise of the city, then the city is given to us. It cannot fall into any other hands. It cannot fall to Piwackets. It cannot fall to Planned Parenthood. Our city council cannot take over the city. It's not meant for that. This city is meant to be given into the hands of God. It's meant for the souls of these people. You've got to understand something. What Jesus did, he did for everybody. Okay? When, when, When Jesus died, was buried and resurrected, his blood... And his saving spirit was given for everybody. And so when, when, when we as a church begin to preach to the city the saving gospel message of repentance in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, and baptism in his name, when we come and we begin to preach that message to the people, we are preaching what Jesus had set up in the, in the beginning of time. From the very beginning, he set this up. And it's meant for every man. Now, hell would do everything it can to distort, to dissuade, to bring fear, and to disillusion anything about the message of salvation. And so God sent us here. God sent us here to preach the message of salvation and to set at liberty those that are bruised and bound. And God said, I will build my church. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will build my church and the gates shall not prevail against it. So gates don't attack us. Gates don't attack me, Tom. I, I, I don't have gates that run around 
pressing against the people of God. No, no. We come to the city and we come to the gates of the city that have been fortified and been held and the inside the gates of that city or inside the gates of hell are all the souls that he has held captive. And Jesus said, I'll build my church. It's my work and my work that I have done will overcome anything hell would ever put against you. It's the work of God. He gave that to us. He gave us the hope. I'm so far off my message right now. Praise God. This is the hand of God. This is the work of God. This is the work of God. Joshua 6, 3 through 5. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus thou shalt do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark of the trumpet of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that while they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend every man straight before him. We have to understand that if you're going to take the city, you're going to have to do it by God's plan. By God's plan. Now, I can imagine Joshua going back he is talking to an angel here. And I can imagine Joshua going back to his military leaders and saying, okay, guys, I got the plan. Okay, now, now we got the plan. Brian and, 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 and uh, Tom, Tom and <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan. I, got the, I got the plan. Here's, here's the plan. This is what we're going to do. So we're going to get the, the, the priests and the ark. Oh, sounds good. Sounds good, Joshua. We're going to go out near the walls. Well, Okay, but um, where do I put the army? Oh, they're going to stay back in camp. No, no, wait, wait, wait. No, you missed something. Um, we're going to attack. Yes, we're going to attack the city. How? We'll get the priests. We'll get the ark, and 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 we'll get the people. We're going to march around the city for once on the first day. We're going to do it the second day. We're going to do it the third day. We're going to do it fourth, fifth, and sixth. But on the seventh day. This is the day we're going to take the city. All right, all right. Where do, you, where, do you, where do you want me to put the archers? Where do you want me to put, where's the battering rams? We'll start building. No battering rams. No battering rams. Okay. Um, catapults. No, no catapults. What are we going to use? The Ark of the Covenant and some horns. Uh-huh. Right, Joshua. Why don't you come on over here? You, you look tired, buddy. <laughs> you want some water? You've been out in the sun too long, buddy. Because I, I really think that I've, I, I know what we, sh- I, see, I saw a weak spot and I, I think if we, if, we, if we put some ladders up here, they don't look like they're fortified there. We could get over the wall. We could, and when the spies went in, they told us that, the, you know, on the seventh day, we'll go seven times. Well, that's a big city. Don't you think the guys will be tired by the seventh time? To, we're going to go seven times. And on the end of the seventh time, the priests will blow the trumpets and we will shout. And then what? That's what we're going to do. we got to obey God's plan. It's God's way. It may not make sense to you and I at all. It may not be something that we look at and we say, that's the way I would do it. Most of the time, that's just not the way I would do it. But God said, you follow my plan. You do it my way. We are here to take the city, and if we're going to take the city, we're going to do it God's way, and we're not going to do it our way. We're going to follow what God has asked. We're going to obey the plan of God. We're going to seek His counsel and seek His guidance no matter what. And sometimes in the taking of the city, and sometimes when we're asked to do certain things, we had it in our mind it was going to be this way. We had it in our mind it was going to happen this way. I'll get this, I'll do that, we'll do these, and we'll do those. And then all of a sudden, the city is going to be ours. We'll have a parade, and we'll get that us in the parade and we'll hand out flyers and we'll, we'll give frisbees away and we'll give out these these totes and and, and then we'll get a, a big carnival together we'll do all of these things and, and we get in our mind and, and that's good we're going to do all of that again next year too we already got the candy for the for the parade we're ready dude we're going to do this i ain't afraid of that if we if we didn't fail If we don't get a lot of fruit from that the first time, we're going to shake the tree again. We're going to shake it harder this time. Something's coming out of that tree if the branches have to fall off. 
but we're going to do it God's way. I, I, I'll do everything I can. I, we'll sit down. We'll come up with a lot of stuff. I, I'm going to sit down with you guys here very shortly. We're going to start looking at some different things that we can do. And we're going to blitz. We're going to do everything we can. But we're going to do it God's way. God's way. You know what God's way is for us? Do you want to know what God's way is for us? This is what God told me. Go out and invite people. Uh, It's not brilliant. it's, it's 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 not... God said, go and invite people. So I, my wife and I, I had nothing to do yesterday. Let's, let's go to town. Why? We've got to go see people. We've got to go see people. I get, into the, I get into Fred Myers. I'm walking around Fred Myers. I meet this guy that I, I, I had uh, met in archery years ago. And we, we, we know each other from there. We talk a little bit. Long story short, we got to talking. And, and he lost his wife a couple years ago. And, and, and we got to talking about God. And I, I invited him to church, gave him a, gave him a card. I, I wouldn't have, I, if I'd have stayed at home, we got to get out. Right. We got to get out. We got, we got to get in the city. We got to reach people. We got to, it, it's going to, you know what? There's going to be a lot of people around the city. A lot of people. We're hitting the holiday season. Yeah. Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that stuff. It's t- we got to get out. I got to go see Krista over in the electronics department. <laughs> we, we got to get out. We got to do it God's way. We got, to, we got to obey God's plan. We just got to invite people. Just keep inviting, keep inviting. We must obey God's plan. The next thing is, in, is found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against rulers and rulers of darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. The thing that you have got to understand is God, God has set his angels out into our city. Mm-hmm. God, God has set his angels out into our church, yeah. just as he did in Jericho. He, he used his angels, and he's using his angels now. The, the fame of God is beginning to spread of what God is doing as, as God is moving, as God is doing things in, in our church. It's going to get out there. All of the things that are happening, God is doing. The, the power of God is moving. And God has given us the promise and has gone before us into the city. Mm-hmm. Now, now, all of these things have been done. All of these things are in work. The next part is our part. And it's the part that we have to do. And it's that we have to fight. We, we cannot sit back and, and, and be very passive in this, this, the, the things that we're doing. We, we cannot be passive in uh, the work of reaching the city. We have got to be the ones that are fighting. God told Joshua and God told Israel, I'll give you the cities. I'll give you the land and I'll promise that all to you. But God did not drive out every inhabitant of the land. They had to go in and they had to fight against the people of Jericho. They had to fight against the people of Ai. They had to fight against the Amalekites. They had to overcome Anak. They had to, they had to take the people and utterly destroy them. But they had to pull their swords out and they had to chase the enemy and they had to fight. God gave them the victory, but they had to fight. This is not a fight for you and I where we can just sit back and we can kneel on our, uh, uh, or come to church and, and, and worship and pray and, and get the blessings of God and then expect that everything's going to happen. We have got to fight. How do you fight? How is it that you fight? The, the, the thing that you have to understand is that we are not fighting flesh and blood as the scripture told us. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. It would be very easy, Brother Mitchell, and I would greatly prefer it if it were flesh and blood that we were fighting against. I would be so happy to get a headlock on somebody. I would be so happy just to get somebody down and put them on the ground and get them in handcuffs and bring them into church and strap them down and say, buddy, you are going to be safe. It would be so great. It would be so great to be able to do that. Let me tell you, there'd be a lot of people in this church today. I've got a couple law enforcement officers. I've got a, mil, a, a Marine. I, I've got some people that we can make this happen. 
But it's not like that. I can't do that as much as I would love to. I can't do that because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against spirit and authorities in high places. You've got to understand there are some things, uh, rulers and wickedness that are in high places in our city. Do you understand that Soldatna is the center of the entire peninsula? that in our city rests the borough building and the borough authority rests in our city. Our city has in it the head of authority in this entire peninsula. And so we have some very high places in our city. The important thing to understand and the important thing to remember is that we have got to come against them. We have got to come against the evil forces that are in our city and fight against them. How do you fight against them? How do you work against principalities and powers? How do you come against them, my friend? You come against them this one way, two ways, by prayer and by fasting. You come by prayer and by fasting. And this church has got to be a church that prays. This church has got to be a church that prays against the strongholds of this city that comes against them. We will go out and we will anoint with oil and we will pray over the people and the businesses that are in this city. We have done that. We will continue to pray in our city. We will walk the streets of our city. My wife and I, this church, have walked the streets of this city all summer long praying over the people of this city. In the wintertime, it gets a little cold. If you can bundle up and walk and pray, that's fine. If you can't, get in your car and, and drive around this city. But we are going to pray down the strongholds in this city. We are going to fight against them. This city, the spirits of this city have never seen a church that will fight like this church will fight. That will never seen a church that will come against it like this church will. And let me tell you something. God is in the process of building the faith and the power and the authority that is inside this church. The spirit that has been moving in this place has been so strong and the things that have been happening have been so dynamic in this church that God is doing it for a purpose because the authority that is in this city, the spiritual wickedness that is in this city is very strong and very great. So he builds that in you and I. Some of us have been going through some very hard things, been, been attacked in some very hard ways. You have to understand that God allows the attack to happen. Why? Because he says, I want you to get stronger. I see a weakness inside of you. I see something that, that, that needs to be stronger, and you've got, to get, you've got to get better. Let me tell you something. If you're going to wrestle against somebody, and you're in fifth grade, you don't get better wrestling a third grader. You're not going to get better Unless that third grader is 20 years old, it ain't happening. <laughs> that might happen out in the Kiski, but... <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. You want to get better. You want to get stronger. You got to come against somebody that's better and stronger than you. You, you got to get somebody that's in... Con and so God will allow that to happen in your life. He'll put you in positions that strain you and hurt you and cause you all kinds of struggle because God says, I want you to be stronger. I want you to stand stronger. I want you to have more faith. I want you to be, to be better. Because we got greater things to do here than just patty cake church, my friend. I got no desire to sit and, 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 and just fill these, these church pews. We got 60, 60 seats out here. And that's awesome. I, I'm all about that. That's great. But I got no desire to fill 60 chairs and say, we're done. Not, that's not in me, my friend. I, 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 won't, I won't settle for that. that that's not what's going to happen. God is going to constantly fill the church. God is going to, and, and, and as we do, you got to understand, as we do, the spirits and principalities and powers that we come against are going to be even greater. And so you and I have got to mature and grow stronger and be men and women of God like we've never been before. Right. We got to fight. We got to fight. And so you'll find hanging on the on the uh, the cabinet back there. I I, I talked to you uh, last Thursday about a, a month of prayer and fasting in November, and we're doing that. And so it's hanging back there. Why? Because I believe that we're in a battle, and we have we've been taking it on the chin. I'm tired of taking it on the chin. He's about to get a good sucker punch. He's about to take some incoming. That's all there is to it. I'm tired of this. I will not put up with the church under constant attack like this. We're going to win. We're going to win. 
we are going to win. Amen. Can we stand?